In this video, I want to take a quick moment and show you how to perform a basic import into FM Starting Point. Now, of course, importing data into FM Starting Point is a universal skill set that you can use to import data into any FileMaker database. In this case, we are using FM Starting Point. I've got a fresh copy of FM Starting Point here. I'm going to click into the Contacts data entry screen. I can see I have the one sample record here that's part of the download. I'm going to go up to Records. I'm going to go ahead and delete this record right here. And right here, I have a sample data download of 5,000 names. And let's say, for example, that this is a spreadsheet, or it could be a tab file, or a comma-separated file. That's what a CSV is. Basically, it's a data dump or a pile of data that is specifically formatted for importing into a, another data source or into another database system. So FileMaker can read uh, Excel files. Other common ones are CSV or comma-separated, tab-separated. Um, really, those are the big common ones. FileMaker will not directly read Word files. It doesn't really directly read PDFs. You really need to be outputting as tab files, comma delimited, which are these, Excel files, even maybe as a merge file. Uh, there's some other uh, more exotic ones that are in here, but basically those are the common ones that you'll see. Now to import, what you want to do is actually navigate to a layout first that you want to import into. That's one of the tricks to making this as simple as possible. I have a file of contacts right here. I know they're contacts because I've looked in here. I can actually double click this and open this up into Excel and Excel will read this and I can see that I actually have contact data in here. And you can look in here, this is all sample data, it's all arbitrary. In fact, there's even labels at the top if I want to organize that. But effectively I have contact information in here. And so what I'm going to do is I want to import that into my contacts database because I don't want to have to manually key all this information in. So how do we do this? So I can click up here under File, and this works equally well under Macintosh and under Windows. But it's not something that's going to work under FileMaker Go. Now it will work to a limited degree under WebDirect. Now let's go ahead and dive into this. I'm going to select Import Records, and we want to import them from a file. Now there are other options here, but I want to go ahead and disregard those and just select File. And I want to select my CSV file right here. Now I actually have this file twice on my computer here. It doesn't really matter. I can select CSV1. They're both identical. And what it does, it's going to allow me to line up the fields, the source data, with the destination of my database. Now it took the current layout I was on and put that over here on the right side. Over here on the left I have the source information. I can actually flip through the records here and see this. And most of the time, you won't have the luxury of actually seeing field labels on the left side. Because this is a really nicely formatted sample set of data, we have field labels on the left side. Frequently, you'll just have something like this, and you'll have to go, oh, well, that's a, a first name and a last name, and that's an address. And you'll have to kind of guess, and you'll see two phone numbers, and you won't even really know which phone number that is. And that'll be kind of a hassle. You have to you know, well, that's a phone, and that's a fax, and that might be a cell. So just keep that in mind. It might take a little detective work to figure that out. Of course, we know that that's phone and fax. So what we have to do now at this point, of course, is line things up. Now we can't really move things around on the left side. What we can do is move things around on the right side. And so what we can do is we can actually click right here on these arrows right here and I can grab and move like last name, first name, the last name if I want. Now I'm going to move first name up one. So first name and last name have swap positions, and that works out pretty good. Now I have title right here, but title doesn't match company. In fact, I don't see title over here anywhere, so that's not going to work. Now primary street 1 is address 1, and so I look over here for address, and that does work right there, so that works. And then I look for phone 1, which would make sense. I'm going to go over here to phone, like that, and line that up. And then I'm going to go primary city, and that's my city. That actually lined up right there real nicely as well. Let's take care of our zip code, postal code. That's state. Here's the zip code. I'm going to have to bring that down one. The state has to come down one. So we got postal code there, state there, 
we got a photo container here which doesn't match up to anything. We have email that matches up. So the short version is here we're going to have to do a, a little bit of alignment to get all this to work. Now I'm going to go through this real quick here. Now I do need to find a fax. So I may have to scroll down on my list here and find a fax. There's the fax. So I have to click it and then drag it up. And then drop it right where I want it. And now it's in there. Now I also know that account name is the same as company name inside of FM Starting Point. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to move account name up. And make sure that lines up on top of the company name. So we got first, last, company, address, primary street one. If there was a secondary address, we'd want that to work too. We'd want that to line up underneath here. City, we don't have a county. We're going to have to deal with that in a second. State, zip, which is also the same as postal code, phone, fax, email, and we still need a web. So we have to find that website right here. Now you'll notice right here that these arrows indicate the data is going to flow across. If there's no arrow going across, that means that when I do the import, nothing will happen. I need to go and turn on the arrow here to indicate the data is going to come across. Fax is going to go across. Company is going to go across. Now the problem is I got this county right here, but I'm pretty sure that I don't have a county field in FM starting point. So to fix this problem, I need to go and manage database real quick right now and define a field called county. I can do that real quick right here, hit create and hit OK. Now it's probably going to be down at the very bottom and there it is. This is actually a new feature they added a couple versions back in FileMaker and it's really handy. Otherwise you'd be stuck having to leave your import screen and that would be a real hassle. So now we just line it up like that and we're totally set. First name, last name, company, which is account name and starting point, address, city, county, state, zip, phone, fax, email, web. And that's it. That's all the data that we actually have on our inbound import. And that's how you align an import. It's super important. Normally I leave the character set to be default. If you get some weird characters or something unusual happening, you can adjust these over here as necessary. But I'm going to leave it as Unicode. Also you can see that these are additional items that may come up. If you have a calculation field over here on the right side where it calculates values, it won't allow you to actually import data into it. So for example you see like target cannot receive data right here. That's a calculation field. Think about it. You can't type into a calculation field. And for the same reason you can't import data into a calculation field. Now these fields here in FM starting point are fields you can type into. Therefore we can import data into them. So I take a look at everything here. Import action will be to add new records. This is just the field mapping right here. Now we have the option of don't import the first record which is interesting because the first record just has labels in it. So that's kind of a handy option here. I mean it's no big deal for us to go back and delete the first record but hey why not. We'll go ahead and do that. And then I think we're set. We're going to import into the current table. We got everything lined up. And so we're going to go ahead and do the import. And as I flip through here, looks pretty good. So I'm going to say import. Now we're going to get this dialog right here. And this is super, 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 super important. You want to select this right here. And the reason is, is that within FM starting point is an automatic numbering system that needs to come on and automatically number all these contacts. In fact, if you're importing into other tables like the account table, which is the company table, or maybe into products table, something like that, you need this automatic serial number generation function to come on. If you don't do that, then the relational capabilities of the FileMaker database just won't work. You'll wonder why the contact records don't talk to each other correctly or you enter notes and they don't save and weird things don't happen. It's because you did an import and you didn't select this option right here. It's very important for the relationships to work that each record has a unique serial number. 
And so what this will do is as it imports records, it will assign a unique serial number to each record as it imports. So it's super critical that you don't leave out this step right here. So we wait a little bit as this runs. It's going to import about 5,000 records into FM Starting Point. Now my copy of FM Starting Point is local on my laptop. And once we get to the end, we get a dialog that gives us a summary. We see the total number of records that are added. If any records had any weird errors, they'll be skipped. And sometimes they'll still be added, but they'll be added with errors. So FileMaker has the option of skipping records under certain conditions due to validation issues, and you can get more into the manual if you want to know more about that. But it gives us a readout right here of what the summary was of the import. In this case, it was a fairly clean import. And I say OK. And as you can go through here, you can see that the information was added. Now what's important to note is right here is the serial number that was added for each person. It was added automatically. You notice they're sequential. This was very important that this was done. So just keep that in mind. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to perform an import into a FileMaker database.